All right, so the first thing I want to do is actually just take a quick spin through the uh, the bake maps here. So if you aren't familiar with Painter at all, it's uh, useful to, I guess we'll just do a quick tour here. So there's a button here where you can toggle between 2D and 3D or 3D only or 2D only. I prefer to work in 3D only. There's not much I, I generally need to do in the in the 2D view. But if you see something like this, that's basically all that's going on. So these are obviously the UVs. And as you rotate the uh, the light, which you can do by holding the shift key and hitting the right mouse button, you can see it's updating here. So oftentimes if you paint uh, on one side, you may sort of see something showing up in another area depending on the projection. So I will usually leave this at uh, 3D only. The shelf here is gonna have all kinds of useful stuff. Uh, if you're familiar with how alphas work in ZBrush, it is pretty similar uh, for, for Painter. We have grunges and these are all, pretty sure these are all generated procedurally, which means if you click on one, you can you can modify it. Uh, then they have procedurals, and these are definitely created procedurally. Textures, if you import a texture, it'll show up here, especially if you tell it it's going to be a texture. Brushes, there's some really cool particle effect stuff that I might just show you real quick just so you see it. It's not wildly useful. Um, they all tend to kind of read as particle effects brushes, but you know, good for certain things. Uh, and then there's uh, smart materials and smart masks, which are which are really useful. Smart materials are basically just layered versions of the regular materials blended in interesting ways. And smart masks are uh, pretty useful for if you just want to kind of grab all the edges or all the cavities, or if you want something to be kind of packed along the bottom surface or whatever, right? So uh, that's what all the shelf stuff is. It's kind of the main toolbox. Uh, layers are where you will organize your different materials. So for instance, if I just grab any old material, sometimes they take a little while to load in. And let's say we'll just grab this one. And let it pop in. So there's just like some random thing, artificial leather, sure. And if I want to scroll through all of the different uh, input maps, I can hit the C button. What the C button will do is basically just look at the channels. I can also get to them uh, up here. So right now I've got a base color channel, metallic, roughness, normal, and height channels. So if I just hit the C key, we can see that we're basically, so there's the base color, metallic, nothing here is metallic. The roughness, it's got this kind of, you know, concrete-y looking thing on there. Normal, there's nothing happening in the normal map. And then height, there's nothing happening in the height map. So that's, we basically just cycle through all those things again, just by hitting the C key. And if you want to look at everything together, that's going to be the M key, M for material. So if you want to see what these look like, the hotkey for that is B for bake. So here's our normal map. This is our world space normal. So the reason these are, are different looking is the, the regular world space map, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the regular normal map is um, going to be capturing detail like this. Uh, if there were wrinkles or veins or anything that was kind of happening on the surface or any kind of surface curvature, that's going to be captured in the other normal map, which will have a much narrower uh, color range. It's basically going to go from sort of purple to sort of blue to sort of pink. And the reason for that is probably not worth getting into here. But with this, this is, this is called the world space normal. So what this is actually doing is each color indicates which direction in world space the surface has to be pointing. So for instance, if you wanted to settle snow along the top of a surface, or you wanted to splatter mud and dust on the on the bottom of a surface, this is how you would be able to control those kinds of effects. So that is the world space normal. Back to the B key here. So these are our material IDs, and you can see that is nice and clean. We don't have any, you can sort of see here, there's like a little bit of fuzz, but that's okay. That's, a, that's the texture resolution. If I'd bake this at 4K, that probably would be a little bit cleaner, but it's no big deal. That all looks fine. We'll hit the B key again. This is our ambient occlusion. Pretty self-explanatory. And curvature. So the way curvature works is if it's a flat surface, it's middle gray. If it has a little bit of a concave bend, it gets lighter. And if it's a convex bend, it gets darker. So it'll just use this as a, as a mask for various edge wear effects and that kind of thing. Uh, and this is position. I don't really know what position does, but you know, it's based on the low, the low poly only. So Painter likes it and it's cheap and easy to generate. And then thickness. I also really kind of don't know what this does, but uh, cause it doesn't seem all that obvious based on, like I would assume this would be 
less thick than this or whatever anyway so but it really needs it and if you don't have it in there you get squirrely results again it's all generated uh, automatically so it's no big deal to just let painter do its thing but anyway back to m for material i definitely don't want artificial leather i just kind of want to show you what that would, uh, would look like you can also create rather than using one of these materials here which are going to be kind of like let me just show you this one so here's like crocodile skin Right, whatever. So if you don't want something that's like this, you just want to start with something nice and basic, you can do that very simply by hitting this key right here, this little button, that's gonna create a fill layer. So I just filled this layer with white, and if I, now I don't really need this texture set settings menu anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. One of the main problems with, uh, with Painter is that there's so much stuff that you might wanna have hanging around there's not a ton of space in the UI, especially with this, this uh, stuff in the shelf here. Uh, hypothetically, if you have uh, in the texture set list multiple materials, that means you didn't assign everything to one material. In Maya, if you remember, we called it Pistol 1, and here it is, Pistol 1. So we don't need to be toggling between different materials. I'm going to go ahead and close this window as well. So now we have the properties, which is going to be great, and the layers, which is going to be great, and the shelf. So that's all kind of I need for the time being, I think. Now, I just did a quick Google search for this gun. It is a Heckler & Koch uh, USP 45 Auto, and I think the light is called the Surefire or something. Anyway, I don't really want to run into any issues with potential copyright infringement, so I have on my other screen here the, uh, the reference that I'm going to be using. You should always use reference, unless you just happen to have whatever you're working on totally committed to memory, which is going to be pretty unlikely. Uh, so I will not actually show you exactly what I'm working off of, but it will be pretty clear as things begin to appear on the gun. So the first thing I'm going to do here uh, in the, the final minute of this tutorial is I'm just going to drop a... So we got the fill layer here. I want something where if for whatever reason, like back here, we saw a little bit of a discrepancy between the two material ID colors. If there's an area that is ever unclaimed, what I want for that area to be is basically flat black. So I'm going to click here in my uniform color of my fill layer, which I'll just go ahead and rename base. We don't want any shininess going on, so no metallic for the roughness. I'm gonna increase the roughness all the way so it's nice and flat, and then nothing for normal and nothing for height. Now, if you don't plan on putting anything in for this stuff, you can actually just turn those things off. So we don't really need any of this stuff, just to kind of keep it potentially as light as possible. So this will be, if there's any, any gaps anywhere in the, uh, the material IDs, it'll just kind of go to this nice flat uh, black color, which should not alert anybody to, uh, to what we're up to. They, they shouldn't see any white stuff going on. So in the next tutorial, we will begin adding materials.